Okay, let's look at a couple examples of unit conversions, and particularly going from metric to English and English to metric. First one we want to look at is, I'll tell you, there's 100 meters, and I want to convert this to yards. So the question is, 100 meters is equal to how many yards? So I said, can set up my problem, like so, 100 meters times... And I put meters on the bottom and yards at the top. But I need a conversion factor to put in my equation here. I look it up in the textbook, and it says 1 meter is equal to 1.09 yards. So this is now my conversion factor. Now plug in the conversion factor back into my equation. It says 1 meter, so I put the 1 at the bottom, is equal to 1.09 yards. So I put 1.09 at the top next to yards. And I've written it, written it this way because I want meters to cancel, and they will. I've got meters at the top, meters on the bottom, they will cancel out, which will leave me with 100 times 1.09 divided by 1 and the only units that are now left is correctly yards 1 I do this multiplication my answer is 109 yards so 109 yards is equal to 100 meters So let's do another one. Let's do it in the other direction, where I have I give you 10 yards, and I want to know how many meters that is equal to. I will set up my equation again, where I have 10 yards times, this time I'm putting yards on the bottom and meters on top, so that my cancellation will go properly. And I go back to my conversion factor again, which is 1 meter is equal to 1.09 yards. This time, the 1 will go on top next to meters because it tells me 1 meter, and the 1.09 will go at the bottom next to yards. So I use the same conversion factor as the previous example, but this time they're in the opposite order, where I have 1 meter on the top, 1.09 yards on the bottom. And this is because I need yards to cancel this time, and that's why I put yards on the bottom. So they will cancel with the yards next to the 10. Once I do that, I'm left with meters for my units. And I have 10 times 1 divided by 1.09. This quantity will be equal to, it will be in units of meters. My calculator gives me 9.17431 meters, but in terms of significant figures, I have two significant figures to start with, and I need two significants to end with, so I have 9.2, because the number after the 1 is a 7, which is greater than 5, so I round up to 2, so my answer is 9.2 meters. So 10 yards is equal to 9.2 meters. Let's try another example. The question is, I have 523 millimeters, and I want to know how many inches this is. Again, I look in the back of the book, and the book only tells me that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. But I'm starting with millimeters. But I know how many centimeters there are a millimeter. 
I know that one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. This is because I went down one step in each step. I moved the decimal place over one, which was 10, which gives me 10. So one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. Going back to my problem, I'll set it up as so, because first I want to go from millimeters to centimeters. So I put millimeters on the bottom so that they cancel with the millimeters next to the 5, 2, 3. Centimeters are on top. But centimeters is not the answer I'm looking for. I need my answer in inches. So I go another step and put centimeters on the bottom and inches on top. This will then cancel the centimeters and give me an answer in inches. Now we'll plug in the conversion units that I have. I have one centimeter over 10 millimeters times one inch, which is equal to 2.54 centimeters. And again, the numbers that I've placed, I've placed a 10 next to the millimeters because that's what they tell me in the conversion unit factor. And I've put the 2.54 on the bottom because they've told me that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. Okay, so I've set, in, set it up, I've set up my problem according to my conversion factors. So I'll cancel out the millimeters, cancel out the centimeters, and I'm left with the units of inches. So I have 523 times 1 times 1 divided by 10 times 2.54. This quantity will be in inches because that's the only units and the proper units that are left. My calculator gives me 20.59055118 inches. But I want to place this in proper scientific uh, significant figures. I begin with three significant figures in my number 523. So my final answer needs to be in three significant figures also. So I need to go to 20.5, which will give me three significant figures. I look at the next digit, which is 9. 9 is greater than 5, so I will round the 5 up to 6, giving me an answer of 20.6 inches. So 523 millimeters is equal to 20.6 inches. Let's do one more example. I have 160 kilometers. That's 160 kilometers is equal to how many miles? I look up in the, in the back of the book for the conversion factor and it tells me one kilometer is equal to 0 0.621 miles. And I will now set up my equation. Well, I will put kilometers on the bottom so that they cancel with the kilometers of the 160. And I put miles on top, so this is my remaining unit. And now I will put my conversion factors in. They tell me one kilometer is equal to 0 0.621 miles. So I put 0 0.621 on the top and one on the bottom. Canceling out the units of kilometers, and I'm left with miles. And what I have is 160 times 0 0.621 divided by 1, and the units are miles. The calculator gives me an answer of 99.36 miles. My original number was in three significant figures. So in this case, I need three significant figures in my answer, which would be 99.3. I look at the digit following the 3, which is 6 which is greater than 5, so I will round my 3 up to 4, giving me an answer of 99.4 miles. So 160 kilometers is equal to 99.4 miles. And this concludes the lesson on unit conversion.